Hello, I'm Cynthia Cohen from the University of Washington. My name is Christian Jackson, and I'm from the VA Loma Linda Healthcare System. And I'm Don Rocky from the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston. We are here to introduce the AGA Clinical Practice Update on Management of Iron Deficiency Anemia. Iron deficiency is quite common in the United States. Along with an appropriate diagnostic workup, iron repletion is needed to improve quality of life and decrease the risk of complications related to anemia. Don, how do you typically approach initial repletion of iron? In many patients, we can start with the oral iron supplementation. There are numerous different formulations of oral iron with similar effectiveness and side effect profiles. Side effects typically include nausea and constipation, and these are common. Taking iron every other day may improve tolerability without compromising absorption. And I would point out that although taking uh, vitamin C is often advised to improve iron absorption, the evidence to support this is actually mixed. Additionally, taking iron on an empty stomach or with meats and not taking it with tea or coffee can also improve iron absorption. When do you advise using IV iron? IV iron is indicated if a patient cannot tolerate oral iron or if the response to oral iron is inadequate. There are some situations where oral iron is unlikely to be absorbed, so IV iron can be used earlier. These include patients after bariatric surgery, those with uh, active inflammatory bowel disease, or when iron, uh, iron loss exceeds the absorption of oral iron. This area is rapidly evolving, and while there uh, used to be hesitation to use IV iron because of potential side effects, including anaphylaxis, this is really not a concern nowadays, so that IV iron is being used earlier and more aggressively than ever before. I would also point out that collaboration with a hematologist can be helpful here if you're uncomfortable with IV iron. Thanks for those tips. Um, Christian, we commonly see iron deficiency in specific GI conditions like portal hypertensive gastropathy, gastric antral vascular ectasias, and celiac disease. In addition to iron repletion, are there any other specific therapies that gastroenterologists should consider? Yes, in patients with portal hypertensive gastropathy, you should address portal hypertension with non-selective beta blockers or less commonly TIPS or liver transplantation. Endoscopic therapy is rarely helpful in this condition. In patients with GAVE, endoscopic therapy with band ligation or thermal methods such as argon plasma coagulation can decrease blood loss and need for transfusion. Iron deficiency is common in patients with celiac disease and in most cases will improve as a small bowel mucosa heals after initiation of a gluten-free diet. Another common clinical situation is the patient with iron deficiency due to small bowel angioactasias. Do you have any tips for managing these patients? Yes, this situation can be quite challenging because angioactasias are difficult to treat endoscopically and bleeding frequently recurs. The most common therapy is APC, but there is also evidence that CLIPS can be effective. Using distal endoscope attachments, such as CAPS, can help with visualization and therapy. There's also increasing evidence of benefit with medical therapies, including somatostatin analogs and angiogenic therapies like thalidomide. Thanks, Christian and Don, for those helpful tips and the overview. To learn, more about, to learn more about managing iron deficiency anemia, please read the upcoming full article in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. Thank you.